Good morning. Good morning. So we are sort of entering into the beginning of the holiday season here, right? Everybody's starting to get thoughts maybe coming up of Thanksgiving and where you're going to go, who you're going to be with, what family you get to see, who you don't get to see this year. And of course, we have Christmas and other holidays following that directly. And sometimes this can be a time in our lives of great joy and anticipation, and we're very excited. And there might be some aspects of all of the holidays that sometimes don't feel as joyful in our hearts. Sometimes we have those experiences of maybe uh, some resistance over particular family members that there might be conflict with. Sometimes emotions come up around the holidays. Sometimes emotions of memories from our childhood, memories of loved ones who aren't with us anymore. Yesterday was the eight year anniversary of my mother's death. And I remember the first Thanksgiving following her passing it was very challenging. It was the first time I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't even expecting to say that, by the way. <laughs> Sometimes God just tells you what to say, you gotta do it. Uh, it was the first Thanksgiving that I didn't spend with family. I was invited by a friend of mine to come to her house and be with her family. And so my husband and I went to a friend's house and it just felt so awkward. And every time Thanksgiving has come up since that year, I just remember my gratitude for her, for opening her home, opening up that space to be with her family in that special time, you know, where we share with our families, where we give thanks for the year. And to be in that place and be in mourning and be supported by my friend and by her family that just embraced us in was just so powerful. Now today, I wanted to talk to you about creating joy, because we all have times in our lives that maybe feel less than joyful. And as we're preparing for this holiday season where we're going out and we're being with lots of people, and to recognize too that they might have emotions that are coming up for them, whether we're feeling any sort of conflict or um, energy around the holidays, we're going to be bumping up against other people who are and that we can hold that space for them as well when we hold that high ground, when we're able to lift ourselves to that place of joy no matter what in our lives. The phrase creating here is very important because I'm actually talking about creativity, that power of imagination. It's one of the 12 powers that Charles Fillmore talks about, the power of imagination that is within all of us. And through that power, we can create that life that we want to live. We can create a vision and hold that vision for ourselves and hold that vision for others as well. When I um, received my first degree was in art education, as Palma mentioned, I have a strong uh, passion for the arts. And I started working with children. So I love seeing the kids here today and them participating with the music specifically, and seeing that passion and that joy that they have for creativity. And I loved working with kids because they naturally exuded this joy for creativity. And whenever they did create, it was like just something came out of them. You know, they were just so fired up about it. Over time, I started working more with adults, and it was a very different experience at first. You can imagine I'd walk into a room of adults and say, okay, today we're going to create. We're going to make art. And so many people would, you know, kind of, I'm not creative. I'm not an artist. I can't do this. And so there was then this tension, this resistance to art. So then I thought, well, I've got a new mission. My new mission became to teach adults to play like children. So instead of bringing in oil paints to class and teaching them fine landscape painting, I brought in crayons and I taught them to paint from their heart, to draw from their heart, to express that natural creative being that they are. And this is the part that I want to bring in today. I don't expect you all to work through any holiday drama 
or anything else that comes in, up in your life with, you know, okay, I need to get out my clay and, and get a potter's wheel or do some oil painting or write the next beautiful song, but just to recognize that when we get in those moments, we can tap into our creative being. We can tap into something else that can help us work through those emotions, work through whatever's going on, and lead us to a higher state of being. And that higher state is that inner state, that knowing of the Christ spirit within us in whatever situation we're in. Now before any of you start internally starting to say, like what so many people have said in my, my workshops in the past, but I'm not creative. In case that thought is crossing anybody's mind here, or even if not your mind, maybe somebody who's gonna watch the video later might be thinking it, because you all are probably pretty creative. But in case anybody ever is thinking, I'm not creative, I just wanna point something out. One of our first principles in unity is that there is one power, one presence, God the good, and that we are sparks of that divinity. As far as I can tell, God is about the most creative being there is. And so if we are sparks of that, we are expressions of God in some way, are we not creative? We're born in the image and likeness of the creator. So of course we're creative. Of course we are. And I think to the degree that we can tap into that creative spirit. We can create more wholeness and balance in our lives. We can use that creative spirit to work through things in our lives when they do show up. We can use that creative spirit to tap into joy in any situation. So when I'm talking about joy, I want to point out that there's a difference between joy and happiness. Do you agree? some heads. When we think of happiness, it is often about something physical, something in this physical world, an experience that brings that feeling of happiness. Yet the idea of joy goes beyond that. We could be unhappy and joyful at the same time. Which seems a little contradictory. But joy is this place of knowing spirit in our lives. It is a place of hope. It is a place of faith. Joy is a spiritual experience. So it is a level that goes deeper than surface happiness. In the Bible, did a little research, and the word joy or a variation of joy shows up 267 times. 267 times. Now, mind you, most of those, like a good majority of them, come from the Hebrew scriptures, the Old Testament. Now, I know you all, when you think of the Hebrew scriptures, you think joy, <laughs> happiness, abundance. What a great life those guys led, right? Not so much. Their lives were filled with tribulation. Their lives were filled with hardships, with what we would call challenges, suffering, pain. And yet, they found joy. One of the places that we find the most references to joy, well, some of the ones that I find the most creative references to joy are in the Psalms. Psalm 511, let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Sing for joy. 3211, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Sing for joy, shout for joy. They dance for joy. And this joy was because they had overcome those hardships, the suffering. And sometimes right in the middle of it, they would still 
sing for joy because they knew God was with them. God was supporting them, guiding them in the middle of it all. Now our lives may not look like the Hebrew people. We may not have wandered the wilderness physically. We may not have walked the desert, been in exile, and yet are there times in our lives where this has happened spiritually to us? Can you think of a time, perhaps in your own life, where you felt separated from God? Where you felt alone, persecuted, shunned? Or where someone told you that your spiritual beliefs were incorrect? You can't follow that. Our wandering may not be a physical wandering, but a spiritual wandering. And in that feeling distant, feeling separated, we feel the pain. And the moment that we realign with the truth that we can never be separated from God, there's great joy in that no matter what is going on in our lives around that, we can reconnect with that. <coughs> Joseph Campbell once wrote, where there is, when you can find that place of joy within, you can wash out the pain. So through the experience of finding that joy, finding that spiritual joy, the pain can be washed away. For myself, when my mother passed, uh, obviously it was a, an emotional time. And I found it very challenging to just resume life as it was. You know, that those are one of those moments where for me it was like wandering in the wilderness, feeling very cut off from the life that I thought I knew myself to be leading from the person who I thought I knew myself to be, many of these identities that I had associated with, the role of daughter or our relationship and how that played out in my life was shifted. And one of the things that got me through was creative expression. And it was creative expression as a spiritual practice. I used what I call visual journaling, which was using an artist's sketchbook and using the pages with art materials. Some days I would like literally just squirt paint right onto the page and then just smear my hand in it. And that process itself was releasing. And it was grounding me in the present moment. It was allowing me to feel what I was feeling. Those feelings that I was trying to kind of just wash over or push aside. And when I allow myself to feel them, then I could move through them. And this is what happens to us in any time that we're feeling any sort of resistance to what is. Like the more that we resist it or push it away, we can't heal it. So this idea of keeping a journal where I didn't always write down words. Sometimes, like I said, it was smearing paint, sometimes using crayons and just coloring out, you know, not trying to make a pretty picture, but scribbling, coloring, getting those mucky feelings out in whatever way they were showing up, and then moving through it, and allowing God to speak through me through that process. This past summer, I had the opportunity to witness somebody who I did not teach the concept of visual journaling to, practicing journaling in a way that was so profound, it brought me in that space to tears. I had the opportunity to go to a prison with the Buddhist monks, uh, actually a Buddhist nun over from Unity Temple on the plaza. You all know they have a Buddhist temple there as well. 
And so they go out to the men's prison and facilitate a Buddhist call out. And Buddhism is practice, right? It's not so much a belief, it's a practice of ideas. And so I went with them as a volunteer, first time I had ever gone into that environment and experienced this. And there were 12 men in the room, four volunteers, including myself. And they were so grateful, so grateful that we were there. And they were the most just open-hearted men that I've met. And it was just amazing to be in this environment that I was honestly a little uh, timid about going into. I'm not a very uh, tall and statuesque, you know, woman, <laughs> you know, I'm kind of little, so I'm like, well, what's, what's this experience going to be, going to a men's prison, sitting in a room, a closed-off classroom with a bunch of, of men who I don't know, I don't know their stories. And within two minutes of meeting them, I knew I didn't need to know any stories. What I knew in that moment was their heart that were coming out. And as our facilitator led a discussion around the practice of patience, I noticed a gentleman sitting across from me with an art sketchbook out. And he had colored pencils. And throughout the entire process, he was drawing. So, you know, me being the artist that I am, and having this background, particularly with this, the sketchbook that he was holding, right? I was just like, wow need to know what's going on. You know, what is this about? What's he doing over there? And so following our service, I went up and introduced myself and didn't share my story because I knew that's not important so much as, as what's going on for him right now. So I just said, I noticed you doing some art over here. And he told me that the art was what gave him hope. That being able to express himself was his meditative practice. That being able to express himself gave him something that he could hold on to, hope in the middle of a prison sentence. And some colored pencils allowed him that hope. And as he talked about it and shared his experience with me, what I noticed was this joy, this passion that he had for it. It wasn't just, oh, yeah, yeah, I do some art every once in a while. No, no, I mean, he lit up. Somebody noticed he was doing this, and he absolutely lit up. And he wanted to tell me all about his practice. He showed me every page, and there's some tattoo designs he had done, you know, some other just sketches that he had done, images of things on the yard that he had found. And it was absolutely beautiful to witness this practice being used as a way to tap into joy, as a way to recognize spirit in a place where we are mo least likely to seem to find it. So in what ways can you incorporate creativity into your life? In what ways can you think of that you can embrace joy through creative practice. Do you love to sing? Do you love movement and dance? When's the last time you held a crayon? When I saw Ellie and Jamie up here, I saw that joy coming through, that absolute sheer connection with spirit, and no resistance, none whatsoever, to singing out loud, even if they don't know the words, right? They were like, I'm going to do this. Give me a microphone. And do we allow ourselves to do that? I encourage you, strongly encourage you, to think on what types of creativity are you willing to express more of in your life? What do you resist even? Do you love dancing but absolutely would be ashamed if anybody ever saw you dancing? 
Do you love singing, but if I sang out loud, they might actually hear me? Do you love baking? Decorating Christmas cookies even, right? That could be a form of creative expression. When we know that we are about to step into a situation that might be tense, that might be a challenge, that might be a place where sometimes in the past maybe we have forgotten our spiritual selves when we walked in those doors. Can we take the time beforehand and create, imagine, use that power of imagine to imagine what would it be like to bring joy into that situation? We could do a collage. Right. Has anybody ever done like mind mapping or, or treasure mapping, dream boards, that sort of thing? Right. Could we do a dream board even of like what the perfect Thanksgiving dinner would be like where everyone's sitting around and they're all smiling and happy? There's no arguments going on. It's not about who's sitting where, who's watching the game, who's not watching the game, or this you know, relationship that's had drama attached to it in the past. Can we outpicture beforehand even, right? Images of smiles, images of togetherness, words of gratitude. So we combine the written word and visual form together. Could that not become our prayer practice that we can try out for a little while before we go into those situations? Before we go shopping, right, as the holiday seasons get bust, Bustling? I was going to say bustly-er, but that wasn't at all a word, so I, I stopped myself. And then I told you it anyway, so you know what's going on in my head. <laughs> but as, you know, you start going out and it's like really crazy out there, you know, sometimes we all have those moments where being around a lot of people, jostling around, looking for parking spots, not so much fun. What if beforehand we take the time, get out some colored pencils, and draw a mandala? You all familiar with mandalas? They're circle imagery. And it could just be little patterns. But you know what? They're so centering. Because what are we focused on in that moment? Not the traffic that we're worried about, not the parking lot, not the shopping. We're worried about that <coughs> moment. And then the worry just disappears. So we bring ourselves to that centered space, to that place where we touch the Christ within. We let that creative spirit of God be God in us. And then we walk out into those shopping malls, without care in the world, right? Just go out and we're, we're centered and present in it. And if it ends up being perhaps a stressful experience and we get back into our car afterwards, well, we could just sing it off, right? We could say, well, that was stressful. Acknowledge it first. I'm not talking about denying that things happen or, or affect us. But, boy, that was stressful. What can I do about that? Maybe sing your favorite song. Sing your favorite carol. Sing a favorite song from church. I love this little light of mine. I know we sang that one time when I was here before, but I love that song. It's one of my favorite joy songs. So something's kind of rubbing me the wrong way, I will just sing that song out loud as I'm walking through the house. So there are all sorts of ways that we can tap into our creative spirit, tap into that natural creative spirit of God in us and let it express outward. So think on what are the ways that you can express God more fully in your life and bring yourself to that state of joy no matter the circumstances around you. We are made in the image and likeness of God, the great creator. I want to end with a quote by Joseph Chilton Pierce, going with the Joseph thing today. We must accept that this creative pulse within us is God's creative pulse itself. The creative pulse within us is God's creative pulse itself. And so as we embrace that part of ourselves, that aspect of ourselves, we create wholeness in our lives. And with that thought in mind, we're going to move now into a time of meditation.